In order to fully understand the sprints and the iteration view, you need to understand the capacity tab, which allows you to go ahead and identify how much work your team can accomplish over an iteration and whether or not certain individuals have too much work on their plate to get it finished before the end of the iteration. So let's look at the capacity for this individual team member that I have on this iteration, and that is myself. Now, if I wanted to add a team member in, I could go ahead and add a user and simply find the user I'd like to add onto this team for this iteration, or I can stick with just this one user, and I could go ahead and say that during the iteration, this user is going to have how many days off, and I could go ahead and specify that. And I could also go ahead and specify which activities they are able to work on during this iteration. So I could say that they could only work on deployment and testing tasks, or whatever I'd like to select. If I'm going to go ahead and select several different activities for this person to work on, I would have to select one activity. And if I want to add a second activity, I can simply add an activity from this menu here. So right now we can see that I have a zero capacity a day, which means that this user can only work zero hours every single day. And let's see what the impact of this looks like on my current project. I can go ahead and go into my work details side pane. And if we go ahead and save this, we can see that none of the bars show up. And this is because there isn't any person to assign any of the current work two in this iteration. Let's up my capacity to eight hours a day and see what this does. We'll enter eight, we'll save it. We can easily identify that the capacity for this user and therefore our entire team is 80 hours across the iteration. And if we look at our team, there is currently 31 hours of work assigned to individuals. Now, where are those hours assigned in terms of individuals? We can look and we can see that for two of those hours, they're currently unassigned. And 29 of those hours of work are currently assigned to Dustin Heathers. And we can also see a breakdown by activity. So again, two of those hours are unassigned and 29 of those hours are all focused in deployment. But where are these hours coming from? We know the 80 hours is my total capacity over the entire iteration, but this 29 hours must be coming from somewhere else. That 29 hours is coming from the total time required to complete all of the tasks and bugs that are currently assigned to this user. Where can we see that? Well, we can go over to my task board, and we can see that on each individual task and bug, there's a number assigned to it, which is associated with how many hours that individual bug or task is going to take. We can also see that all of the numbers on our bug and task cards roll up to the requirement that they're associated with. So right now we can see this requirement takes 22 hours based on the combination of all the tasks and bugs. And I could go ahead and up this bug to say seven hours, and we see that it's incremented here on the requirement itself. So we know that over in our capacity tab, we had a total of 29 hours. Where we can easily identify these 29 hours, well, currently those 29 hours are all the hours assigned to Dustin Heathers, and we're currently looking at all the places where something was assigned to Dustin Heathers. So we can look and see that for things that were assigned to Dustin, they roll up to 24 hours here, 3 hours here, and 2 hours here totaling our 29 hours.